Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, I am Professor Shantanu Tripathi, I am here to discuss a topic today and that covers muscarinic drugs that are effective or that, that are acting through muscarinic receptors, more precisely anti-muscarinic drugs. From the very term it, it is clear that these are drugs that will be producing their effects by blocking the muscarinic type of cholinergic receptors. As we know already from our understanding that we have gained in physiology and also in some introductory classes in pharmacology that the autonomic nervous system has primarily two wings sympathetic and parasympathetic and it is the parasympathetic nervous system which the major neurotransmitter of which is acetylcholine and the effects of acetylcholine as a endogenous neurotransmitter is mediated through the muscarinic type and the nicotinic type of receptors. Now these drugs anti-muscarinic drugs they produce their effects by blocking the muscarinic receptors. Now anti-muscarinic drugs or anti-muscarinic agents are basically then muscarinic receptor antagonists. These are the agents which are also interchangeably referred to as anticholinergic drugs. They may also be called as parasympatholytic drugs, meaning thereby when you talk of anticholinergic drugs, basically we mean that the drugs that otherwise would, would block the effects of acetylcholine, but more precisely when acetylcholine produces its effects through muscarinic receptors. When you talk of parasympatholytic drugs, so stim when, when parasympathetic postganglionic nerves they are stimulated the kind of effects they produce the anti parasympathetic or parasympatholytic drugs would be producing effects that are opposite to those that are caused by stimulation of postganglionic parasympathetic nerves. Now atropine which is a very common name we all are familiar with the term atropine it is the name of a drug and its congeners atropine chemical congeners and besides that there are also quite a good number of agents which are not really congeners to atropine but all of these drugs together. They, they share some common properties and all these properties can be explained by their ability to block the muscarinic receptors. So atropine is considered as the prototype of this group of drugs. It occurs in the nature more precisely in the plant kingdom while another naturally occurring anti-muscarinic drug is hyoscine the other name for it is scopolamine. Besides atropine and hyoscine both of which are naturally occurring the other anti-muscarinic drugs are synthetic. Some of the synthetic atropinic some of the synthetic anti-muscarinic drugs are atropine analogs or atropine congeners like homatropine, ipratropium, triatropium while there are rest of the anti-muscarinic synthetic drugs they are actually non atropine analogs that means they, they do not re resemble with the chemical structure of atropine. These drugs include some of the examples this is by no means it is exhaustive list comprehensive list some of the examples are pyrenzepine, dicyclomine, cyclopentolate, tropicamide, glycopyrrolate, propanthelin, oxybutynin, tolterodine. So these are some of the examples we will discuss some of them how in which conditions they are used and how they produce 
their benefits and what are the side effects of these drugs, what are the possible interactions, in which conditions they should not be used that is their contraindications. Regarding the source of atropine and hyacin as I have already stated that they occur in nature in the plant kingdom, atropine occurs in two kinds of plants, one is atropa belladonna, the other is datura stramonium. From both these two uh, plants we get uh, from their plant extract we get atropine, while hyocene or scopolamine can be obtained from hyocyamus niger which is another plant. Just to explain further about the in order to understand the pharmacology of these types of drugs antimuscarinic drugs, we need to recollect the uh, autonomic efferent pathways and their distribution. Now, here you see now in autonomic efferent pathway let us recollect if we remember that the central neuraxis from the central neuraxis the efferent nerves autonomic efferent nerves come and as we have already stated that there are two arms of the autonomic nerves and one is the sympathetic division the other is the parasympathetic division. The sympathetic and the parasympathetic both will the primary neuron will end and then there will be a ganglion it will the primary neuron will synapse with the post ganglionic neuron and finally, the post ganglionic neuron would be supplying the effector organ be it a smooth muscle be it a, a, a gland or whatever. So, in case of both sympathetic and parasympathetic the ganglionic transmission is mediated by the same neurotransmitter and that is acetylcholine and the receptor involved in the post ganglionic nerve ending is the nicotinic receptor. In the somatic motor nerve also at the motor end plate we also have we know that there is also nicotinic receptor involved but the nature of these two nicotinic receptors are different and they have been accordingly differently marked or differently named. However, in the post ganglionic parasympathetic nerve when it is going to supply the different effector organs at that level the neuro effector junction the neurotransmitter that is liberated that is acetylcholine and that acetylcholine after its liberation it will be pro, it will be stimulating the muscarinic receptors at the effector organ. So, whatever effect they will be producing is by stimulating the muscarinic receptors. On the other hand when you talk of the post ganglionic sympathetic nerve the effector organ receptors are adrenergic receptor because the neurotransmitter at that level is actually norepinephrine and epinephrine or noradrenergic noradrenaline and adrenaline. So, today we will be more concerned about the muscarinic receptors. Here is a cartoon where we are trying to show the post ganglionic sympathetic nerve ending from where acetylcholine that is synthesized within the nerve post ganglionic parasympathetic nerve acetylcholine is being released by exocytosis and then this released neurotransmitter acetylcholine will be acting on the muscarinic receptors that are located in the post synaptic cells cell membrane the cholinoreceptors they call it basically they are muscarinic receptors and this is the receptor for the agonist acetylcholine because of the binding of acetylcholine with these receptors you get at the post ganglion post uh, membrane level there are the different uh, uh, cascade of events occur as a result of which the different effects will be will be result resulting in. Now, these are the receptors which can be blocked by a group of drugs that we are discussing today and so because of blockade of these receptors or antagonism of these receptors these drugs are called anti muscarinic drugs they are also known as anticholinergic drugs because they are blocking the action of acetylcholine on these receptors and because they will be producing the effects which are because by the by the uh, blockade of the functioning of the parasympathetic post ganglionic nerve. So, that is why they have also been called as parasympatholytic drugs. 
atropine and other muscarinic receptor antagonists then will be acting on this post synaptic muscarinic receptors and by blocking them they will produce the effects. Now, talking about the different types of the muscarinic receptors, where are they located and when they are blocked what kind of effects will be produced. So, if we can understand this then it will be not difficult to appreciate the pharmacological actions of the different anti muscarinic drugs. Broadly we have three types of muscarinic receptors, but to be more precise there are two more types. The muscarinic receptors are classified thereby as muscarinic 1, muscarinic 2 or 3 and there are 4 and 5 also, 5 types of muscarinic receptors and they are located at different tissues or different sites like muscarinic receptor 1 or M1 receptor are located at the at autonomic ganglia, gastric glands and in the brain in the central nervous system. In the central nervous system besides the M1 receptors there are also M4 and M5 receptors. Now, the M1 receptor in the autonomic ganglia actually they are they are residing at the preganglionic uh, membrane and stimulation of these receptors will inhibit further release of the neurotransmitter. That is true for ganglionic transmission. In fact, M1 receptor is also there at the preganglionic fiber or the presynaptic fiber, presynaptic postganglionic sympathetic nerve ending also, thereby the release of uh, noradrenaline and adrenaline is also regulated by muscarinic receptor stimulation. So, M1 receptor in one word broadly it is there physiologically it is there to, to regulate ganglionic transmission. So, if you block M1 receptor that ganglionic transmission will be will be otherwise stimulated. Gastric glands which is responsible for secretion of hydrochloric acid in the in the stomach. If you block M1 receptor there will be reduced acid secretion. In the central nervous system at different parts we are not going into the details of where precisely they are located, but broadly speaking the different sites of brain there are M1 receptors and there are also other types of muscarinic receptor subtypes M4 or M5 and they are associated with the different central nervous system functions like memory attention, emotional response. So, they are stimulated. So, thereby if you are blocking this M1 receptor or the drugs that otherwise would be reaching central nervous system or the brain by crossing the blood brain barrier, they can impact on these uh, central effects of muscarinic stimulation and thereby there might be memory deficits, there might be problem in, in, in keeping the attention level there might be emotional uh, response will be disturbed. So, this is how one can explain how they are producing the different benefits. Coming to the M2 receptor which is located in the heart, because M2 receptor stimulation is responsible for reducing heart rate, reducing the AV conduction or atrioventricular conduction of the neuro of the impulses and also reducing the force of contraction. In other words, we call it as negative chronotropic effect, negative dromotropic effect, AV conduction reduction, and negative uh, enotropic effect that is the force of contraction getting reduced. Now, if you block M2 receptor, then all these will be you will be getting different just opposite kind of uh, effects, and that is the heart rate will increase, the AV conduction will be facilitated or the force of contraction will be in should be increased. This is all the more reason why the, this is also important because the all these activities are actually under dual control while M2 receptor stimulation is trying to dampen them these activities the sympathetic stimulation because they are also there is also adrenergic beta 1 receptor population stimulation of which will have the increase in rate increase in the conduction increase in the force of contraction. So, when you are blocking the cholinergic part counterpart <coughs> there will be 
more of the uh, you can say unabated action of the sympathetic. Coming to the M3 receptors, M3 receptor as compared to M1 or M2, they are more widespread in the periphery, in the gastrointestinal tract smooth muscles, in the eye, in glands and in blood vessels smooth muscles. So, everywhere M3 receptors are populated and when you stimulate them, there are contraction of the smooth muscles, when you block them just there will be relaxation and this can be better understood the kind of effects they are producing. <coughs> now, this is a uh, cartoon that shows actually the uh, distribution of these 5 types of receptors M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5, what are their location and when you uh, when they are stimulated what is happening and once we understand that. Uh, particularly in reference to the different effector organs and if once we understand that we will be able to appreciate when you block them what kind of effects can be produced. This next diagram will demonstrate that further, this is about the salivary glands. So, the anti muscarinic drugs when you are using there will be blockade of the muscarinic receptors in the salivary glands and thereby there will be dry mouth secretions will be dry less. Similarly, when you talk of colon, when you stimulate there will be peristalsis will be stimulated and the spasm intestinal spasm and when you block it smooth muscles of colon there will be constipation, there will be less secretions also there will be constipation. In the bladder the detrusor muscle of the bladder is responsible for voiding actually parasympathetic nerve is also called the nerve for voiding, while the sympathetic innervation in the bladder is called the nerve for feeling. So, when they are blocked the smooth muscles in the bladder, they are blocked by anti muscarinic drugs, there are chances of retention of urine. Similarly, when you talk of eye, the iris and the ciliary body, so there the muscarinic receptors that is the uh, M3 receptors, when they are blocked there are the accommodation will be will be affected and there will be blurred vision. So, that is what is called cycloplasia or loss of accommodation and uh, paralysis of accommodation rather. And uh, because of the same thing uh, the light reflex is also uh, otherwise lost and uh, the because of the uh, because the muscarinic receptors in the ciliary body is also affected. Now, the lacrimal gland is also affected and uh, so as a result we can expect uh, its impact on the secretion of the eye and you will have dry eyes. Salivary glands we have mentioned in the heart it will produce tachycardia, in the stomach and esophagus there might be dysp dyspepsia because of uh, reduction in the acid. Uh, secretion and uh, in the CNS central nervous system particularly those anti muscarinic agents which will cross the blood brain barrier, it will have the potential to cause dizziness, somnolence, impaired memory and cognition. So, understanding of the distribution of the muscarinic receptors uh, and will help us in, in appreciating the pharmacological actions of the anti muscarinic agents. Thank you.